A Farmer Boy Birthday by Laura Ingalls Wilder. Once upon a time, a little boy named Almanzo lived in a farmhouse in the New York State countryside. One winter morning, Almanzo was eating his good hot oatmeal when father said, It's your birthday, son. Almanzo had forgotten. Now he would not have to go to school. There's something for you in the woodshed, father said. So Almanzo ate his oatmeal as fast as he could. At last, breakfast was over, and Almanzo and father went to the woodshed. Inside, there was a little calf yoke for Almanzo's own two calves, star and bright. Father had made the yoke himself, and it was strong and light. Father said to Almanzo, son, you are old enough now to break those calves. Almanzo carried the little yoke to the barn, and father walked beside him. Star and Bright were in their warm stall. When they saw Amonzo, they licked him with their wet, rough tongues. They did not know that he was going to teach them how to behave like grown oxen. Amonzo and father led the calves into the snowy barnyard. Father helped Amonzo fit the yoke over the two calves. When father had tied a rope around Star's little horn, he said, Well, son, I'll leave you to figure it out. Then Almanzo knew he was really old enough to do important things all by himself. Almanzo stood in the snow and looked at the calves, and the calves looked back at him. He thought about how he could make the calves understand that when he said, Giddy up, they must walk straight ahead. And when he said, Whoa, they must stop. Finally, he went to the cow's feed box and filled his pockets with carrots. Giddy up, he shouted. Then he showed Star and Bright a carrot. The cast came toward at once. Whoa, shouted Almanzo when they reached him. They stopped for the carrot. Almanzo gave each of them a piece. How quickly they learned. Almanzo practiced and practiced until the cast were behaving just like grown-up oxen. When father came to the barnyard and said, It's dinner time, son. Almanzo could hardly believe it. The whole morning had gone by in a minute. Father, mother, and Almanzo ate dinner in the kitchen instead of the dining room. Almanzo thought it was very strange to be eating alone with father and mother without Royo and Alice and Eliza Jane. When he finished eating, mother said, Please fill the wood box, Almanzo. Almanzo opened the woodshed door by the stove, and there, right before him, was a new hand sled. Almanzo could hardly believe it was for him, so he asked, Whose sled is that, father? Mother laughed, and father winked his eyes. Do you know any other boys here that wants it, father asked? It was very cold out, but the sun was shining. All afternoon, Almanzo played with his sled. He climbed to the top of the hill, and away he went. Each time, the sled went flying end over end into the deep drifts. Almanzo went flying, too. Then he pulled the sled up the hill again. For another ride. When Almanzo was tired of sledding, he came back to the warm house for apples and donuts and cookies. In his right hand, he held a donut, and in his left hand, he held a cookie. He took a bite of one and then the other. Then he climbed the stairs to Father's attic workroom. Father was making shingles from pieces of oak logs. His hands moved quickly and smoothly. They did not stop, even when he looked up and said, be you having a good time, son? Almanzo answered, Father, can I do that? So father put his big hands over Almanzo's, and together they shaved one side of the shingle smooth and then the other. Then Almanzo went to watch mother weave cloth in her loom. Mother was sitting at the big loom. Her hands were flying, and her right foot was tapping on the tread- treadle. Thud, said the treadle. Clackety clack, said the stuttle. Thump, said the hand bar, and back flew the shuttle. Everything was snug and comfortable. Too soon, the shadow slanted down the eastward slopes. Royal and Eliza Jane and Alice came home from school, and the four of them all finished chores together as usual. Almanzo's happy birthday had come to an end, but what a wonderful day it had been. The End